One warrior, on his own, in a field chock full of grizzly bears. Can he overcome the insurmountable odds and emerge victorious from the battlefield? Well, of course he can! He's me! You think I'd start the video off by dying? Of course not. This video is sponsored by Netmarble. What is going on guys, it is Powerbang, welcome back to another video. This one is brought to you by Netmarble, it's their brand new title, Lineage 2, currently in beta and not quite yet launched. You guys have been asking for different titles, some games that I've been playing kind of off the air. Well, this is one of them, I've been playing this for actually a couple of weeks. Uh, this is one of my uh, characters from my Android phone, I don't know, you can't even really see it, but anyways, level 22, Dark, Myst or Dark Elf Mystic, I've got on my Android and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make a video for the channel started up an account on the uh, the iPhone here and I've got a couple of characters as of right now I've got a human warrior and also a dark elf rogue so I wanted to show you guys kind of some of the things that you can actually be it's really kind of a blast from the past and it takes me back to my old MMO days when I used to sit and play World of Warcraft but now this is a brand new like MMO genre on the mobile phone it's actually really really impressive it uses the Unreal Engine 4 uh, for the graphics and whatnot, the sound's amazing. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out some of the characters. Humans have well stats and adapt quickly to any class. Humans worship Ein Hassad, the goddess of light. Nice. So a little info on the humans there. Pretty well balanced. You can see the character stats down there on the left. Uh, very well balanced on that graph. But let's go ahead and check out the elves. <laughs> ha! 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 Nice. Ein Sweet little transitions. Elves from water making them agile and light on their feet. They are protected Sweet. by the goddess of water, Ava. So this looks like a really, like, uh, evasion, mana efficient character. Pretty good on attack, lots of crit, not the best on defense, and uh, really lacking on HP. So let's go ahead and check out the Dark Elves now. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And he's got the laugh. So we got the Dark Elves specializing in dark magic. They used to worship the goddess Shylin until their race's downfall led them to deny their faith. Uh, so the, the Dark Elves here, really strong on attack and crit. That sounds kind of like, you know, right up my alley. I'm more of a all, all ahead full, uh, not so much on the defense. Speaking of defense, let's check the dwarfs out. All right, so the dwarves are, who would have thunk it? Such a small package, but so many hit points and so much defense. Uh, the crit and the attack, uh, average, evasion and mana, average, but these guys are absolute tanks. And the humans. A creation of Gran Kine. All right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and make a selection, guys. Let's go ahead and go with, uh, I gotta go with the Dark Elves, man. I just love the offense so much. Let's click, uh, let's click next and see what we can do. This is just the beginning. It's just the beginning, he says. So we can actually select between three different classes after we select our race. Uh, warrior, Rogue, or Mystic. We can actually preview some motions. Or, or some laughter, I guess. <laughs> there we go. That's what that's what I was expecting. A little more uh, attack animations. That actually is really cool. Let's go ahead and enter a, a name here. We're gonna go with PB three. So create character. We're locked and loaded. It's time to it's time to do it. All right. So here we are in game, and this is uh, reminiscent of many hours that I've spent in the past playing MMORPGs on the PC. Uh, it blows me away that I can actually do this on mobile now, so uh, pretty cool little attack graphics here, not gonna lie. So I'm out of soul shots. What soul shots are are basically damage boosters to my attack, so I'm gonna clear that little note there. Show you guys some attacks. You've got a couple of abilities down there on the bottom right. Uh, you unlock those as you kind of skill up and as you go. Uh, but really, really cool graphics and music and I mean, just quality is, is top notch in this game so far. I love the combos that you can do too. As you continue to like beat these bears up, these grizzly bears, they're, uh, you, you build these combos up and it actually boosts your damage. 
You can see down there to the right of my character, I'm up to a 3% damage boost right now. And uh, we are we are continuing to work now on maybe a 4% damage boost at like maybe 60. Let's see. Yep, there's the four. Wow, I got a tree in the way, I can't even see. So, pretty cool graphics. Uh, really, really liking the feel of the game, considering it is mobile. Wow, so at 90 combo, I get a 5% damage boost. I wonder if that's something that scales as the game goes on. Wow, so, okay, just wrecking some bears for absolutely no reason. Uh, there is the ability to quest. You can click on the left, there's the ability to go auto quest, and it'll take you right where you need to go uh, following this little blue path here. So it's actually kind of efficient and cool. This will save some time if you don't have time to sit down in front of the PC for hours on end trying to figure out, you know, where you're supposed to go as part of the quest. So turning off the auto uh, quest, there's no more guide. Uh, there is on the top right, you can see a mini map, and there is a blue arrow on there. If you follow the direction of that blue arrow, that'll actually take you where you need to go. Uh, as long as you're following that, essentially as a waypoint, you can see right here, I should probably cross this bridge. Uh, MRV Lobo, thank you for the new sub, man. Really appreciate the support of the channel. Welcome. All right, so it looks like I'm nearly here. Uh, that blue arrow is starting to turn more rapidly. There she is, there's Naya, so that's who I'm supposed to talk to for the quest. So if you check out the upper right portion of your screen, there's actually a mini-map up there, and if you click that, it opens up a larger map of the whole zone that you're in. Now, I'm in a starter zone right now called East Talking Island. I'm here questing, trying to level up, and basically get strong enough to move out, spread my wings a little bit, and start taking down some larger monsters and participating in some larger dungeons. But beware, when you do leave the zone, there's gonna be a lot of other players out there. Some of them will be trying to hack your head off because this is a PvP game. This is an open world uh, experience, which means you can run anywhere you want to. If I want to, I don't have to do this quest. I can go somewhere else and start killing monsters if that's what I think I feel like doing. Uh, but there also might be other players out there that feel like doing the same thing. And if you cross paths, if you're in a zone where it's uh, allowable, you can actually fight each other and uh, get in some pretty big battles that way. There's open world bosses uh, where you can actually team up with parties uh, to go take down those bosses that are super strong, they give awesome rewards, and they actually have what's coming uh, after the, the, the launch of this game. When they do launch the game, there's going to be a 30 versus 30 Fortress Siege, which is going to be like player versus player battle for control of a fortress. Pretty cool game mode. And then on top of that, there's going to be a 200 man Castle Siege. So some really big plans in this game for PvP. Really excited to kind of see what works uh, out in that regard later on once they get this game launched. <laughs> Not much is going on, Naya. We're going to get some quests here. We'll open up the dialogue here. She's going to tell us uh, what we need to go do. Well, I guess it's a little nicer without all the bats attacking me. I just killed some bats for her. Of course, that means there's more work to be done. That's what my dad wanted all along. Well, you better honor him then. We've got to go gather dolmen fragments around here. Use this elven ring to die identify the dolmen fragments. So, go pick up some stuff, basically, is what she's saying. Uh, there's going to be an accept quest menu. I can get a bonus reward of some gear at the very end. There's some experience and some Adina, uh, which is basically gold. Uh, we'll go ahead, accept the quest, and be on our way. Here we go, auto-questing to the next location. There you see the fragments on the ground. They're highlighted there, so we know exactly what to pick up. We'll go ahead, pick those things up. We need three of them, and once we've got three, we're gonna head on back. Merging the dolmen fragments did something to the center of the ruin, it's emitting a light. How could this be? Seems to be reacting to this. Oh, 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 oh. Dwarves talk funny. <laughs> All right, so it looks like uh, the something happened there. I don't know what, but we're about to find out. So, anytime you see one of those blue lights, a little portal, you can actually walk into it and interact with it. Uh, we are now talking to a purifying fairy. Welcome, trusted one. I've been waiting for you. I'm the Purifying Fairy guarding the barrier. So the quest is complete. We'll claim our reward. We got some tracker boots. We can actually go up to our inventory, and uh, we have a, an ability to auto-equip. There's nothing that we need to replace because those tracker boots were not as powerful as the boots that I currently have on. These Avadon boots, I have 123 combat power with those. And my boots themselves, if you look at the ones I just picked up, uh, those only have 117. So not smart to replace those. Kind of keep an eye on the stats as you build up your character. Uh, one thing to kind of show off here is the ability to forge your equipment and level up items. Uh, if we look at the boots that we just picked up, since they weren't good enough to actually use, we can still get some value out of them by taking them to the 
the forge, going to level up what we currently have, and then throwing in, whoops, I clicked the wrong button there. We'll click level up, and hold on, there we go. We're on the right menu now. We'll throw in the uh, the boots there, and maybe a uh, little, little varnish as well. I don't think we have enough for the varnish. We'll just go for the uh, the boots and click level up. The equipment will be used in this process. Of course, that's fine. And boom, there it is, crossing over 4,000 combat power. I don't know if that's good or bad. I assume it's bad. We're kind of at the beginning here. But the Avidon boots have leveled up to level 2. Um, very, very good there. So that's how you use the forge. I'm down pretty low on, uh, on Adina. So let's do some quests and actually make some. What do you say? So, Adventurer's Island and the Island of the Beginning, that's how it was protected from dangerous monsters. Okay, recently the barrier has come under the influence of darkness. If the barrier falls, Talking Island will no longer be safe from these monsters. That's foreshadowing. That's gonna happen. The barrier will fall, and I will have to fight off the monsters. I just know it. Fortunately, we can drive out the darkness using a purifying device, but it requires your assistance. There you go. That's the ticket. I'll accept the quest, and oh my god! Jesus, that was like a jump scare. Oh my god! What is happening here? There's literally like six of these huge royal guards out of nowhere. It's purifying fairies back there dancing, pretending like she's gonna help. Well, we were able to get it done. Whew, that actually scared me a little bit. I thought we were gonna have to like go run somewhere, but apparently not. Uh, we'll go ahead and accept the next quest. They got through cracks in the barrier. We must hurry to purify the barrier. We must move to the control location, the central location. Quick! Well, let's, let's go. All right, so we're going to follow her and try to uh, basically accompany her. All right, nothing is happening right now as I'm hitting these guys. There we go. Had to come to the different angle there. All right, so we continue on with the Purifying Fairy. And uh, let's go ahead and get these dudes killed. Purifying Fairy's tough, luckily. Yeah, if you go behind these guys, it doesn't want to hit them. That's kind of funny. What if they're protected from the back, or if that's a little, uh... little oversight there on the Royal Guards. Yeah, so I'm gonna hit him from the front. We'll just, uh, we'll go there. Wow, two-shot at him. Those abilities that they have down there are super strong. Alright, we almost made it across the bridge. Really cool scenery. The waterfalls on the left and right. Very nice. We got up to a little platform here. And it looks like we're done. Claiming the reward. We've got some mana potions. Ooh, we learned a new skill? Nice! We learned a new skill as well for the, uh, the rogue can actually hold a bow or a dagger. So you kind of take your pitch on what you'd like. The dagger does kind of more fast attack, a little bit less, uh, damage per hit, but it's kind of bleed damage and it stacks up really nicely for sustained damage over time. Uh, whereas the bow is more slow firing, but really heavy hits. So, I prefer kind of the, the dagger, more because it's easier to aim. All right, so here we go. Oh my god, we've got more. Let's use this new ability. You guys ready? Whoa! So you dash behind them. That's kind of cool. I'm down with that. Okay, so the rogue's got kind of a, a typical dash behind ability. Not bad. We finished up that quest as well. So we got some more loot. We're going to level up to level 7, throw on some additional combat power, and it's time to accept the next quest. Gorsor. Gorsor is here! Love the name. Love the name. We must slay him. Alright, so if I do that, I get some weapon varnish, level up one of the weapons I have. It's time for... Oh. Maybe I should've went with the bow and arrow rather than the dagger. Maybe a slight oversight on my part, I don't know. Alright then. Let's hear it. Let me tell me what you really think. Oh crap, I'm getting my butt kicked. Alright, we're gonna dash behind him. Okay, cool. This guy's immune to knockbacks, it looks like, but he's not immune to getting his butt kicked. I'm dealing damage like crazy right now. Ooh, he's got- he's dropping damage on me. That little red uh, aura there, it looks like he dropped fireballs from the sky on that area. I've gone behind him. Took advantage. That's how we do. Alright, so Gorsor is down. We'll talk to the Purifying Fairy. She's a monster like Gorsor inside the barrier? Shouldn't have happened. Well, it did. And we're gonna have to fix it, I think. So something big is going on. We must activate the purification device with haste. No, I think they mean quickly, not an actual haste spell for those of you that, you know, may follow that particular game. All right, so claim the reward. Type C, armor, weapon varnish. 
It's done, but there's no time to rest. The other three barriers must be in danger, too. We must activate the other purification devices as well. Please help. We must do it. Use this teleport stone to leave. I will find you when ready. Well, let's go. We'll use this teleportation stone and get out of here. All right, so mission accomplished. It's got to be the end of the episode. Or not. We're going to go talk to Naya some more. Maybe that's the end of the episode. Yeah, there we go. I, I knew it. It just seemed like a, a natural closing point there for the episode 1-3. We are clear. Uh, we got some rewards there. We got some weapon varnish. We got some armor there in a box. Let's go ahead and open that up and see what we get. So we did finish up episodes 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, and 1-3 on this video, but we have a whole lot more to go. Not going to have time for it today, but just to give you an idea of the roadmap of what's to come, East Talking Island has a whole bunch more stages to clear. Then you've got West Talking Island, then Gluten Highway, then Gluteo Plains. We got Wendelwood Manor, Wasteland, Plains of Dion, Kruma Swamp. Holy cow, there's so much in this game. Summit of Dissonance, Shrieking Hollows, and I believe that is about it for kind of, I guess that's like the single player questing missions, uh, but then there's dungeons and all kinds of stuff outside of this as well, so plenty to do in Lineage 2. Thanks so much, guys, for watching the video. Really hope you like the new game. I'm enjoying playing it and will likely play this after it launches. I will be forming a clan, so feel free to download it when it comes out. If you guys want to get pre-registered, go to the website link in the description. There's actually going to be rewards for those that do pre-register. There's going to be a starter pack that Netmarble's giving away. It's going to have in-game loot, going to have some gems, it's going to have uh, some weapons and armor and that kind of thing. So make sure you guys get signed up at that pre-register link. It also allows you to more importantly, reserve your player name. They are unique, so there can only be one power bang. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, so make sure you guys get on over to the website link in the description. You'll also get a special exclusive title for being one of the first in to pre-register for Lineage 2 Revolution. Lastly, I want to thank Netmarble for sponsoring this video. It's a really good game, and I'm looking forward to trying it out when it comes out globally. It's because of videos like this that I'm able to continue to produce content full-time on YouTube, so I'd appreciate your support by going to the link in the description, pre-registering for the game, reserving your name, getting your title, and also all that free swag that you're going to get from Netmarble. That's going to do it for the video, guys. This is Powerbank, signing out until next time. Take care.